is subjective like like really subjective what scares us is based on our own experiences and the way we perceive the world around us the anxieties and the uncertainties we have can mix terribly with our traumatic experiences and when horror movies can appeal to whatever that terrible mix may be it can be absolutely terrifying some of the greatest horror films of all time like the shining the exorcist or even rosemary's baby have one key thing in common the ability to ground their supernatural elements by giving the audience something relatable to associate with a cold bedroom isolation or a pregnancy creating an everlasting echo of those disturbing images and implications of the films inside of our minds for years to come resetting every single time we interact with those otherwise harmless aspects of our daily lives hereditary taps into this from beginning to end as it deals with heavy themes of passed down trauma through familial toxicity and grief heavy heavy grief you okay mom What? Is there something on your mind? Is there something on your mind? It just seems like there might be something you want to say. Peter. Like what? I mean, why would I want to say something so I could watch you sneer at me? Sneer at you? I don't ever sneer at you. Oh, sweetie, you don't have to. You get your point across. Okay, so fine, then say what you want to say then. Peter. I don't want to say anything. I've tried saying it. Okay, things. so try again, release yourself. Oh, release you, you mean? Yeah, fine, release me, just say it. Just fucking say it. Don't you swear at me, you little shit. Don't you ever raise your voice at me. I am your mother. Ari Aster was able to establish a dreadful, dark, and uneasy tone from the opening shot with not a single word of dialogue. And what's more impressive than that for me is the fact that he was able to maintain it in this movie's two hour and seven minute long runtime while managing to avoid the familiar structure in the horror genre like boring, unengaging family drama with brief pauses for gross expositional dumps probably in a library and jump scare fests full of fake scares and inconsequential spooky imagery by night. No, the drama in Hereditary reconciles beautifully with the horror elements. They complement one another in a way that feels organic and refreshing, so the themes never feel lost in the shuffle and the horror never feels in the way of some grand allegorical statement that the director prioritized over making a genuinely scary movie. The directing here is absolutely top notch. Astor has such an assured hand at this point, so this being his feature debut is incredibly impressive. Illustrious wide shots packed to the brim with horrifying details that don't call attention to themselves, beautiful and inventive camera movements and techniques, fantastic editing choices, and the confidence to let the characters reflect in complete silence without sacrificing the atmosphere or tone are all traits of a highly skilled and experienced master who's been working in this genre for decades, so I cannot wait to see what he does next. Cinematographically, Hereditary is basically perfect. The framing and shot composition are reminiscent of a film straight out of the 1970s and in an era that seems to give little thought to what goes into each shot, that's refreshing. The camera is allowed to tell large portions of the story visually with very clever parallels and metaphors and some of the important reveals are done in complete silence through photographs of familiar symbols. The lighting is both moody and beautiful and considering the fact that practicality isn't shied away from, especially in the night shots, that's quite an achievement. Simply put, this film is a visual treat that absolutely deserves to be seen on the biggest and best screen available. The performances here are all great for the most part, but there are some moments where Tony Collette and Alex Wolf overcook it just a little bit, and young Millie Shapiro is appropriately understated and creepy as hell in ways that are only enhanced on a second viewing. Seriously, this film needs to be seen at least twice. The score is fantastic when it shows up, but it's surprisingly underused, especially in the first half of the film, and that's not really a bad thing considering how refreshing silence is in a movie like this, but it's worth mentioning. The sound design overall is absolutely amazing, and certain vital plot points and details are conveyed exclusively through sound, which work to great and unsettling effect. The editing was also a strong point as seen specifically in the first act would often cut when you least expected them to, making the pacing feel a bit strange and uncomfortable. It reminded me a lot of Don't Look Now or even Roman Polanski's Repulsion, as both of those felt like a collection of well-executed compartmentalized moments, at least in their first act, that were constantly built into something huge and horrific. I won't say much about the story because spoiling this would be criminal, and the execution is the real star here, but I will say that certain devices and motifs work brilliantly. Charlie's little click works to great effect, and Annie's miniatures are disturbing and add a lot to this film's already detailed and well-staged production design, which 
definitely complements the story and adds a layer of immersion for the audience. Overall, this is quite simply my favorite horror film since The Witch. I suspected it won't be for everyone primarily because of the slower pacing in the first act which can definitely alienate mainstream horror audiences and because this movie fully commits to the supernatural elements so the art house horror crowd might feel alienated as well. All I know is I cannot wait to see this again and I'll be buying into whatever Ari Aster does next. 8, maybe 9 out of 10. Do not miss this one in theaters. Thanks for watching. I'm Lee and I'm a fake critic.